Hi guys and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So I recently come across a cool little project from a couple of hams and thought I would test it out and see how easy it was to set up. Now essentially this little board here is an audio interface and it's being created through a collaboration of Steve KM9G, otherwise known as Temporarily Offline on YouTube, who conceived the idea for this Toad's digital interface along with Hayden of VK7HH from Ham Radio DX and Jonathan KM4CFT who put it all to PCB. Now over the years there's been many iterations of sound cards and ham radio audio interfaces and in more recent years we've had all star nodes that require a specific type of USB sound card for them to work. Having a choice of hardware to use with our projects is welcomed and these type of projects show how innovation within ham radio community is still going strong today. So what can we do with this? Well, in short, it allows you to take a radio's received audio and send it to a computer and then send a computer's audio output to a radio for transmitting. More modern radios do already have these audio interfaces built in, but there's still a great amount of hardware that does not have native support for audio interfacing. So something like this will do the job just right. Using the CM108 chip on board also allows the use of a COS input, which essentially tells the computer when the squelch on the radio has been opened. Now that's very useful for when working with applications that need to know whether the channel is free or busy before sending a packet of data. Now the user guide covers all of the various connections on the pin header here, but there's also another option you can purchase to go with the Toads DI. And well, that's the daughter board. Not only does it provide a simple six pin DIN type socket for easy connection, there's also two variable controls, which adjust the incoming and outgoing audio levels to and from the attached radio. There are some switches on the board which cover choosing either 1200 board or 9600 board, and whether you use the left or right audio channel from the sound chip. There's also a switch for the COS line, whether it's active in high or low signal state. The Toads DI is simply plug and play via a USB-C socket you can see there on the board. There's no drivers that's needed on Windows, Linux, or even Raspberry Pi operating systems. Once the two boards are fitted together, you can just use some little standoffs just to make sure it's more secure. Now here, I just use some plastic ones. Now to demonstrate using this audio interface and to see how easy it was to set up, I chose this device from my cupboard of ham gear. Now I've featured this on the channel before, so I'll not go into too much detail, but essentially it's a low power ham radio transmitter and receiver for two meters and 70 centimeters. Now it has no built in sound card and it has no display or speaker in built. So we have to use the EXTIO port. Now the EXTIO port provides everything we need to connect to the Toads DI. That's a PTT input, audio in, audio out, and of course a COS line, which feeds back to the digital interface to let the software know when the squelch has been opened. If I was using a radio like Yesu, for example, I could probably have found a ready-made cable, but for this I had to consult the wiring diagram information in the digital interface manual and the transceivers manual, and then just make my own cable. Now for this, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 5, which incidentally I just put into this new case that I got. The digital interface is actually powered from a USB port on the Pi 5, and that hobby PCB transceiver is powered from a 12 volt DC supply. I have also plugged the transceiver into my computer so that I can use the remote software to configure things like frequency squelch level and volume level. And once that is set though, the transceiver will remember those settings even after a power off. So using the latest Pi OS, I opened a terminal and typed LSUSB and press enter. And that was just to make sure that the Pi 5 was seeing the sound interface. Now the example I'm gonna show you will be using APRS or packet application called Direwolf. Now I could have installed lots of other applications like SSTV or make this even into an all-star node. All of those software packages will work with this digital interface, whichever operating system you use. Installing Direwolf is fairly easy and it's just a case of entering a few commands in order and then letting it install. 
And I won't go over that in this video, but I'll leave a link in the description where you can go and download the manual and follow the installation script if you need to. I will, however, show you how to configure Direwolf to use the Toads DI. And well, it's super simple. So before running Direwolf, we need to edit the configuration file using sudo nano direwolf.conf and then fill out some information. Now the first section we need to edit is to tell Direwolf the device name of the attached sound card. And that's on this line here that starts with a device. Now to find out the exact name, exit from here and go back to the command prompt and just type CM108 and then press enter. Now the device name should now be shown under the A device column. I believe you can use either of those names, but close that and go back to editing the configuration file. As you scroll down, ensure that channel is set to zero and the my call setting is your call sign. You'll also see a little further down a line that says PTT CM108 and make sure that it looks like this and it's not commented out. Now that should be enough to get it working to receive packets, but let's just enable a couple of other things. First, we'll configure a beacon that transmits on RF and also to the APRS IS servers. This is so that our eye gate will show on the APRS.FI map, for example. To ensure that your eye gate will log into the APRS IS servers, you need to ensure the IG server field is enabled, and you will also need to edit the I log online with your call sign and APRS IS passcode. Now you can just use Google to locate your APRS passcode, just Google passcode generator. Now it'll provide you with a unique set of numbers relating to your call sign. And without this, your eye gate will not log into an APRS IS server and any received APRS packets will not be sent to that central server. As part of the Direwolf installation, you should see a desktop shortcut to Direwolf itself. You can now double click on that to start Direwolf. Now, if everything is working, then you should start to see packets of data being decoded and shown on the screen. Now, just for this demo, I'm also showing the transceiver's remote control program, just so you can see when a signal is received, that Direwolf decodes the packet and then logs it onto the screen. Now any errors that you get here will be shown in this window too. And most of the time it will either be the device name is wrong or the audio volumes are not set correctly. Depending on the radio you're using will depend on where you adjust the audio first. But if you have the daughter board for the Toads DI, then those two audio adjustment pots would be the first place to start tweaking. Direwolf also provides a KISS TNC, so you could use this to talk with your local BBS instead of using it for APRS. Now with this solution, you do not need any of those old clunky hardware TNCs anymore. You can do it all within software with a cheap digital audio interface. Now let me know down in the comments what you use your audio interfaces for, what digital modes have you tried and what hardware did you use? Now the Toads DI has been sold from three locations, I believe, around the world. One is in the US, one is in the UK, and one is in Australia. Now I will link below to the relevant stores if you fancy getting one or finding out more. But be quick, these sell out really quickly. And if you do get one, just let them know that TechMind sent you. Anyway guys, it's another little bit of hardware that's been released to the public from the ham community. Take care yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.